that tells you something, first of all, you don't just exist. You know, a rock exists. Rock doesn't have to fight, doesn't have to do anything. But you, to exist, your body has to fight, to live. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and in everything, give thanks. Give thanks. Giving thanks is crucial for a believer. If you're born again, you are spiritually Jewish. You're an Israelite. The word Jew comes from Hebrew, where the Hebrew word Yehuda. The word Yehuda means someone who gives thanks. Someone who thanks God and gives praise to God. But you may not be feeling thankful when you think of things you're dealing with, but we got to get back to reality. If you're saved, if we're saved, you've been saved from hell, from judgment. That's something to give thanks for. You've got eternal life. You've got heaven. That's something to give thanks for. You're the most blessed person you could ever imagine. That's something to thank God about. That's why it says in the Bible, it says, in everything give thanks. Well, well, God's not going to give you a command that you can't do. Giving thanks is based on something else. It's one command that if you're going to give thanks, you've got to have blessings to give thanks for. So if it says that you're supposed to thank God in everything, no matter what, all the time, that means you must have so much blessing that you can thank God for the rest of your life. Amen. But tonight I want to show you a blessing you probably don't think about much. And yet it is amazing. In fact, you're alive because of it. Psalm 139 says this, verse 14, I will praise you. For I am fearfully, or awesomely, and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and my soul knows it very well. One of God's works is you. Some people would tell you you're an accident. You weren't meant to be. You were unintentional. No reason, the kind of thing that happens. You know, an accident happens on the highway. You know, it doesn't mean anything with that. But people would say, you know, at the same time, you know, you know, just your eye, just your eye alone is more complex than a television camera. The perfect receptor is to receive light. Perfect transmitters, darkness and light together, color. More than a television set, it's electric. People would say, you know, your hearts, your lungs, it's just, it's all put together. Electri there's electricity going on with you, a digestive system, a nervous system, uh, with muscular system, perfectly functioning pretty much. Pretty much. I mean, think about how many machines you have that break down. You know, if your body totally breaks down, you're dead. But look, you're not dead. You know, most of you, I mean, it goes for pretty 70, 80 years or more, it pretty much stays. Pretty amazing. And with chemicals and with a million things going on, maintaining your, your temperature, all these things far superior than anything we can do with our intelligence. We can't even create something like that, a computer, something more intense than a computer and yet all alive. The human mind far more complex than anything that we could devise with its memory, its conscience, its light, with all these things. It says in, in Romans, it says, professing themselves, they, they become, to be wise, they became fools. Well, so that's what's happened to the modern world. It says we are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are a miracle. You are a miracle. Even if you don't know the Lord, you're still a miracle because God made you. But there's a war going on around you, against you, a war against your life. You can't see it. They're the germs that are everywhere. Your mother's been telling you about them for long. You know, wash your hands, you get germs. Don't put that in your mouth. Don't suck on that. We had a lock that we had all the, this, the whole COVID thing. We all became very aware of it. Don't do this. Your whole life you've been watching out for germs and you haven't seen one yet, but they're there. But you know they're there, they are there, and they're attacking you. They're the most prevalent form of life on the planet. All types, you know, all sorts of, we lump them all together, germs. The only good, you know, but the fact is they're real. Do you realize all around you, I mean, everywhere, there are germs. And if they had many of them, some of them are benign, but many of them had their way, you'd be dead right now. Tuberculosis, leprosy, malaria, the plague, all that. So your life is under constant warfare. You're being warred on right now. Your life is something important. It's being warred on all around you. That tells you something, first of all, you don't just exist. You know, a rock exists. Rock doesn't have to fight, doesn't have to do anything. But you, to exist, your body has to fight, to live. 
You know, we, you know, no matter who you are, you are in a warfare that is for your life. Life contends to exist. Love contends to exist. What is good? So what does it tell you? First of all, what is life? What is alive is going to be warred against. What is good is going to be warred against. Don't be discouraged that you are warred against in, every, in all sorts of ways. So therefore, we must protect life. We must protect what is good. We have to protect what is alive. It's like you have a garden. You have to protect the garden. You might have a wall around the garden. Or you, some way you've got to protect the garden because it's alive. And if you don't protect it, it's going to be dead or it's going to be weeds. A shepherd has to protect the flock. If he doesn't, the flock will be dead. Love protects. You've got a family. You've got to protect your family. You've got children. You've got to protect your children because your children are alive. They're alive. God set up watchmen in Ezekiel. He said, I, I said, it, said, I appointed you watchmen. The prophets were watchmen. And it says that you're, you're watchmen because the watchman stands on the city and he has to, he protects the city by a, sounding the alarm, sounding the shofar the moment he sees danger. They put up walls because they were protecting life. They were protecting a city of life. But so in the same way, God has woven into you a whole system of protecting you, like watchmen, all over. And I want to, I want to, it's going to be very different, but I want to show you what a miracle this is. You know, first of all, if you have any attack in your body, all of a sudden it's like there are watchmen in your body. And as soon as that, they send out an alarm to the rest of your body that there's an attack. Right away, they will, it will start sl slowing down blood to that area. Then, then troops will come in, in your body. They are called, I mean, so you don't, you're not even aware of this going on, but it's happening all the time. It's like a SWAT team comes in called neutrophils. They engulf, if there's bacteria, they will engulf it. They will wage war against it. You can't see it. You don't even know it. You're, you're, most of the time you don't feel it, but they are coming in to wherever there's an attack against you. Behind them come other troops they're called the macrophage. They, they are bigger, they, and they, were, they have been protecting you since you were conceived. What is good must be fought for. Now, what happens if inside of you a cell goes bad? Okay, cell goes bad, begins reproducing in a way that's not for the, not for the rest of you, turns tumorous, turns cancerous, life-threatening. It actually happens more than you'll ever know. It's happened to everybody. It's not that people, these people have cancer. It's that, it's that it got too big. It, it overcame. But you have cells. You have something going on. It would, you would have been dead many times if God did not put into your body cells that just make the rounds around your body. They're good cells. They're patrolling you. Part of you, it's patrolling every part. And they look for anything. If they see one, of, one cell going bad, they go and they attack that cell. You know, the FBI, the CIA, has, they have specialists. They, you know, they, 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 they're specialists about terrorists or foreign leaders or criminals. You know, well, God put into you specialized cells that have specific targets. You have something called lymphocytes. They, they are your killer elites, really. They, what they do is they wait to be educated this is real. They, they, they wait about any particular threat that has come to your body in the past. They're going to study it. They're going to get ready to, if it ever comes again. You have two kinds of these cells. One are B cells that fire chemical spears at anything that attacks you. The other are T cells that have chemical swords. Both have chemical keys on their surface. When an enemy microbe comes in, with a fitting, with a lock. These special cells have special weapons against those special cells fighting for your life. You have something called the B cell. When it's shown an enemy cell, it goes into red alert. It's go, it changes, it changes, it transforms, it morphs into another kind of cell that's a killer cell that starts pouring out antibodies against that threat that has come into your body. Antibodies are chemical spears that lampoon the cells that are trying to destroy you. 
Bacteria, so if bacteria multiplies. So you've got these cells, these plasma cells, they start multiplying and they start sending out missiles all over to preserve your life. Then you have another enemy against your life and that is viruses. Now viruses are so small that if bacteria was an entire football field, a virus would be a football compared to a bacteria. That's how small they are. It's not even certain if viruses are alive or not alive. They're kind of like the aliens in the movies you see, the invasion of the body snatchers or alien. They cannot reproduce themselves. The only way they can do it is to get inside one of your cells, get your DNA, they use your DNA, they use it to make more viruses. So the cell turns into a factory of viruses. And so, it looks like a regular cell, but it's been taken over. It's like a factory. But when, and so when a cell dies, thousands of these viruses come out and then they invade more cells. So this is a real like alien, it's like diabolical. You see, it's the fall. You see, you think you have a whole, a little, I just have a cold today. It's really the invasion of the body snatchers going on. How does your body fight this? Well, you need a specialist to fight it. You have a kind of, you know, ever see there's the movie called Men in Black, they fight, they look for aliens. That's what your T cells actually do. The T cells patrol your body looking for these invaders. The viruses though are so small, they go into a cell, you can't see them. But in order to get into the cell, it's gotta remove its coat. It has a protein coat, gotta go. So, so the T cells look for these coats outside a cell. If they find it, that's it. They go to that cell, they shut it down, they destroy it, the virus and the cell. And then, then it, it calls for helper cells to come and they come and they make strategic decisions about where they should put the defense, all that to save your life. So a big war is going on over you. Yeah, like the feeling you're being fought over. After the war is over, a few of the soldiers live on. They live on because they remember what it was. They sit around in your bloodstream, and I'm, 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 you know, I'm using, I'm speaking loosely, but telling war stories, they remember the war. The key is they remember what the enemy looked like. And they carry the weapon that is specifically geared to destroy that enemy if it ever comes into your body again. Fighting for your life. What a miracle you are, that you're alive. You're not just alive, you're alive by the will of God and you are kept alive by the miracle of God. So what, do we, what does this tell us? You want to know things we should be thankful for? Things we don't even know, we've, we don't thank, we're not thankful yet, look at what's happening. Whatever is good is gonna be warred against. Whatever is of life is gonna be fought against. And so it has to be protected. Now I'm gonna apply this spiritually now to several areas of your life. Areas of what's alive, first of all, in your life. Well, family is alive. Marriage is alive. Your home, it's alive. It's a living thing. And thus, there will be things that are gonna war against family, against marriage. It's gonna, especially today. The marriages have been destroyed more than at any other time. Since the 60s, you know, back then, the, you know, the, the rate of divorce was so small. Now it is so, has been so large. Or, and then there are many people who never get into marriage at all. About 40% of children in America are born without knowing a father and mother in marriage. Now. But see, there, were, there are things that, will, that are ger spiritual germs that go against marriage and family. Selfish, a culture of selfishness. A culture of promiscuity. Pornography. A culture of instant gratification, a culture of me, me, me first, it doesn't, go, it doesn't work with marriage. A, 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 you know, marriage is a beautiful thing. When you see a wedding, it's a beautiful thing. But there are germs waiting to attack it. You know, it could be baggage from the past, m problems, financial problems. Every marriage needs an immune system to deal with what attacks it. And, that, and, and no matter what, to deal with it, something comes up. You know, the Bible says, don't let the sun go down on your anger. It says you can be angry, but don't let the sun go down. So don't keep anger in because that becomes a germ. That becomes a destructive thing to any relationship you have. 
Don't let it fester. That doesn't mean you have to, uh, you have to confront everybody about everything. You can just give it to God. But be finished with it either way. Some things you do have to deal with. Manifest the truth with love. Don't let it keep going on. Talk in love. When it's a germ, germs of anger, germs of, 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 of bitterness, germ, germs of mistrust, of coldness that comes into a marriage, germs of temptation, cut it off. Hedge your marriage. People, you are married. Hedge your marriage. Specific hedges. Hey, this is how we're going to deal with this. When we're, you know, so we're not tempted, we're going to deal like this. So when we start having an issue, we're going to deal with this. We're going to do it this way. Let's agree on that. Deal with it with love. And fight offensively. In marriage, it, you know, it's not just that you're supposed to be on the defense. Something comes up. You're supposed, the best fighting is offensively. When you're not having problems, nurture it with love. Bless the other person. Lift up the other person. Family too. Family. What, what attacks family? Nobody's been in a perfect family growing up. But coldness, lack of, re of respect. Again, again, it hurts that become, become bitterness. To guard that. When there's a misunderstanding, that's when you have to deal with it. You know, you know, there are, th there are seeds of divisiveness that kill families and marriages. We've got to fight that first in our head. In your head, that's where the germ comes. It says, take every thought captive. But all your relationships will be attacked. And there's a germ that all it takes is one person. A person can have a great relationship, and they make one mistake, and the person gets hurt, and that's it. Happens, in, happens all over. You have to protect it. Deal with it. Deal with it. In your heart, deal with it. You need an immune system for every, for every relationship you have in your life. But then there's something else that we deal with. We don't, may not think about it this way. The Bible says it right out that this is a body. The Messiah, this is, a, this is the body. And then the entire body of Messiah is a body. A body, it says, has different members. But if it's a body, it means it's alive. If it's alive, it's going to be attacked. And if it's going to be attacked, it's going to be attacked by these spiritual bacteria, spiritual viruses. How? What, what things attack the body? You know, the enemy wants every body to be destroyed. Past baggage. People come in from their past. They bring it in from they had a bad relationship with their, their family, their childhood, other congregations. They bring it in. Ego. That destroys relationships, destroys bodies. Pride. Discontent. You know, you know, again, somebody offended you. Great. They're all, it's always going to happen. You, you want a place where nobody's going to offend you. You got to go, go to a graveyard because that's the only place. So you're not going to have it. As long as you have people, they're going to step on your toes. That's the way it is. That's why the Bible says, always forgive. Put up with each other. Forbear with each other. Deal with it. Don't write them off. Don't, don't close the door. Discontent. Majoring on the minors. Getting your eyes off the Lord. Gossip. Deadly. Gossip, you could just say, is a virus right there. It's a virus. You take part of it, it's going to affect you. It's going to infect you as well as those around you. Amen. You were hurt by someone. Okay, what, that, that's not the issue. What do you do, what do, you do with it? How, you got to put up with each other. You got to love each other. You want God to put up with you, you got to put up with other people. It says, you know, don't wait for the problems to keep coming that you're, then you're fighting. Fight the good fight. Dwell in His presence every day. Dwell on the heavenly. You're going to be strong. Lift up, and when you don't, and, and just with people around you, lift up people, lift up encouragement, encourage yourself. David, strengthen himself, encourage yourself. When you're, when, when you're not in the middle of it, and when you are in the middle of it, you'll be strong. Hi, I'm Jonathan Kahn, and I hope you were blessed with the video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Feel free to share your reactions with your comments and how you were blessed and share this video with your friends. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.